Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. We've got a one versus one for you today. This one is going to be on Theta Passage 2 versus 2. Now, Theta Passage is a highly recommended one versus one map. If you can win on Theta Passage, you pretty much have a good chance on most of the maps because it is a basic 5k expansion is crucial map. Now, what these two guys have done is they're basically holding a one versus one on the exact opposite of a good one versus one map because there's tons of mechs all concentrated in the base there are a dozen 14 mechs and two hydros in the home territory so what we're gonna see here is a tech explosion we're gonna see probably 40 plus mass per tick within five minutes on the game and we're gonna see massive massive amounts of tanks produced and you can see right here we're already prepping for a mass extractor upgrade on nexus's side because he's building power generators around his mechs. This match is between Nexus on the south side, he's taking UEF, and Gently on the north side, taking Aeon. And Gently is taking a much more laid back posture with his mechs and power output. He is pushing towards his Hydro rather aggressively. But uh, yeah, not overall, not quite as brutally on the nose as Nexus is. And we do have Hydro going out here. We got an Air Factory coming up for Nexus. That is a good thing. Second Air Factory is generally the best way to go because then you have early enough air that you can get things online to defend yourself, but not so early air that you power stall. Gently is also going the second air route, and he is going to throw down his Hydro, assisting with his ACU for maximum build speed, and then an extra power generator. And oh, no, wait, that's a land. My bad, people. That is a land. I'm staring at it the entire time thinking it's an Air Factory. And it is, in fact, a land factory. Let's see. Uh, engineer. Yes, that is land. All right. Got a tank and a scout moving out. The scout, yeah, right here. Screw map control, am I right? Yes, because you have 14 mechs in your base. No one needs the extra mass extractors. Um, you always have to have a scout paired with an Aurora. I know I've said this a million times, but it bears repeating because people still make the mistake. Um... You have longer attack range than video vision radius with... Let's start over. You have longer attack range than vision radius in the Aurora. So if you do not have radar, you are sacrificing your range, um, your range advantage. And since it only has 140 health, you will die at that point. So, my running theory is that Aeon is going to have the advantage in the Tech 1 phase. We'll have to see how quickly that Nexus can jump to T2 and also how well he can use his T1 bombers because T1 bombers are your friend versus Aurora's. Aurora's died in one hit, unlike other T1 tanks, and so are pretty paper. You can just kamikaze unlimited amounts of T1 bombers into tightly packed forces. They will easily pay for themselves in mass with the Aurora's that they destroy and it wreaks havoc on what the other player is trying to doing so trying to be doing so yes build d1 bombers build lots of t1 bombers there is no other way to go about it <clears throat> nexus is throwing down second hydro another land factory there's a little bit of reclaim in the middle of this map not a ton there's quite a few rocks scattered about enough that you should definitely dip your toe into the reclaim but not so much that you need to prioritize it right out of the gate. We've got a striker paired with a Tech 1 Engineer that is going to protect it from any advancing flares that may come in. And then we got a bomber right here circling in. Nicely placed interceptor coming out to, well, intercept it. Are we going to get a bomb? We may not even get a bomb. Yes, well done, Nexus. Bomber was definitely not worth it. Waste of mass by Gently. Because it did not do a dang thing before it hit the ground. We got uh, another land factory. That makes three. And land factory spam for Gently. He's got, uh, let's see, there's three down, three more going up for a total of six and seven. And then we've got two air factories on top of that. So his production is far higher than Nexus. And it looks like he is getting, let's see, 243 versus 60. He is getting more reclaim, which is helping him out. So he is pretty well balanced. He is kind of low on power, but that is going to be remedied at some point. Um, very nicely balanced overall. Nexus of Reality is relying more on his mass extractors 
before advancing his eco, then reclaim. As you can see right here, we've already got spots of rock gone in several areas for Gently. So kudos to Gently for playing that out well. Nexus, I think that's something that you could probably improve on if you watch this cast. As always, watching your own replays is a good thing for improvement. If you make a mistake, it's okay as long as you learn from that mistake. You just don't want to keep continually making it over and over and over again because, yeah, people might begin to doubt your intelligence. Okay, you got Auroras and the T1 artillery, the fervor moving in. Those are going to wipe out a mass extractor and then Aurora's kiting backwards as they very well should as long as you have that radar coverage and we do right here, two land scouts. <clears throat> um... Those are going to be able to stand off at range and pick off other T1 tanks as they please. Now, normally in a fight, what I do is I put one scout and five tanks on a factory. And then I go the rest of the game building that uh, until I get out of the T1 phase. And then, you know, I have other factories doing a couple tanks, maybe an anti-air, and then another factory doing a tank and an artillery or something like that. So overall, between three or four factories, I get a good mix with... Aeon, you definitely want to keep a couple more scouts in your mix than you might with other factions. And that is strictly because you have got to have that radar coverage. And scouts die easily, and they always run to the front because they're fast. So, got to watch that. Got some Aurora's breaking on the right side. Strikers are going to move in to wipe that out. That's pretty much going to be no contest because the Auroras are sitting still. Gently is not watching them. But I do like this. Point defense. The bane of the Aurora's existence. That is going to set up a sentry point on the far right side. So if any Auroras dare try to make it through the pass, that point defense will pick them up as they try to attack that mass extractor. <clears throat> right there. Winging all the way down to the south side and almost to the cliff face here. Not really going to be able to slip any units by that. So well-placed point defense. Nexus. All right, ACU trying to be a little bit aggressive, and the striker's moving in. One thing you do have to be careful about with this ACU. If you place your ACU too far forward, the Auroras can kite your unupgraded ACU. So that could put you into a world of hurt. Ooh, gun speed done. That's not going to be pretty. Um... It can put you in a world of hurt when the Auroras are kiting your ACU. You can't get close enough to kill them because they're faster than your commander. And this... Ooh. Gently overcharging the only T2 unit on the field, which is the disadvantage of the early T2 jump. If you only have a couple of units, um, the ACU is a match. And air control going to Gently. Gently is going to get the... Re uh, the reclaim on this one. He's already bringing an engineer up from behind and reclaiming some of his ACU. Feeding his war machine. There's a T1 bomber. I like to see that. It's strange that we have not seen one already, but yeah, air control is in Gently's hand, so I guess not too entirely surprising. Got a T2 HQ up here and a T2 support. So that is going to give Gently the ability to throw down a T2 engineer and a point defense. This is interesting placement, actually. I think he's anticipating um, trying again for gun upgrade. Nexus had to cancel it on the front. And Bomber circling around. He really needs a flak as well. There's a lot of things he needs. There we go. T2 Engineer building that flak. It's going to get shot down, though. So no go there. But there's a flak out of the back. Mobile flak will do just fine. Thank you very much. Um, I think Gently is anticipating ACU aggression, perhaps, but basically he's forcing the line forward, building point defense in an area where he can defend his line if he falls back ever so slightly, and that leaves him in possession of the reclaim, which you can see right here. We've got almost 2k reclaim for Gently and 2k for Nexus. Actually, that doesn't show what I thought it would. I would have thought that Gently had more than that. But Nexus is doing a fairly good job of reclaim himself. Let me use my minus key. There we go. All right, Flak is going to go out and promptly die. Nice use unit placement, bud. Bomber coming in, and again, I'm wondering why Blue is not abusing T1 bombers, because I would think that would be a good thing. He does, however, have a lot of pillars. Pillars are going to be three ticks faster. They have substantially more speed than the Aurora. They have a little bit more reach than the Striker does, and they do have a whole lot more HP. So these guys are going to be able to bite into the hordes of Auroras, 
but there are blazes. Gently is actually going to abuse blazes by kiting T1 units and getting around with a pep in his step. Blazes are very quick. As you can see, they make a good raiding unit. Gonna zip around the outside edge. Got artillery knocking out this point defense. Overall, it looks like Gently is just disassembling Nexus systematically. Moving around the outside edges, pressing at key points to draw the ACU and combat units away from where they probably should be. Nexus of Reality is throwing away a lot of resources on pushing this back, and he is going to have to retreat at this point. Gently does have both gun upgrades. He's got range and speed, and then we have the Oblivion turrets here now focus firing on the ACU. So yeah, that is going to get forced back. I think Nexus should take a step back, not feed, gently reclaim, and probably try to bite for a T3 upgrade at some point soon. He does have 51 mass per tick income. He is gonna have a slight issue with the southern side, but I think a couple of strategically placed T2 point defense would more than seal up that gap. And then he can focus on the primary objective. Ooh, ACU in the red. That is not what we like to see. 2,000 health, shield moving in. Gonna catch that Oblivion shot. Well done on that one, down to 1,800 health, taking fire from the ACU directly. He's gonna have to throw away some units kiting at the front to save his commander. He did get down below 1,500 at that point. Now we do have units on the southern side. Nexus actually is not that far behind on Eco though. He's at 43 mass per tick and even power income. He's reclaimed 3,500 to 2,800 on Gently's side. So Gently is not picking up as much reclaim as he could. Kudos to Nexus for staying ahead in that regard. And he is getting an upgrade. I'm not sure which one it is. It's showing plus one. We will have to wait and see. Oh, upgrading T2. Derp. Look at the text, Brink. Sometimes the answer is right in front of your face and you don't see it. And this Blaze, still alive with seven kills. Uh, sometimes I underestimate how good a uh, tool the hover tanks actually are. Um, they definitely are weaker than the T2 main tanks, but sometimes that speed is just the thing that you need to strike on the outside edges, and it can be an incredibly helpful tool. As you can see, Gently does have a good amount of obsidians on the front line, those are going to be the main tank that are going to be able to take on and obliterate the pillar. But he is kind of leading them back. There we go, bringing him in to strike. Once his ACU is in a little bit of a bind, he is going to get down to 3,200 health. Nexus is almost done with his upgrade. I'm glad he was able to finish that because if he would have gotten forced out of a second upgrade, that would have been absolutely horrendous. But he is going to get that one finished, I think, and he was able to stop the advancement of that ACU. Aeon has such a brutally strong commander when it gets that double gun upgrade paired with the Auroras and maybe some blazes for backup immediately next to the ACU. Got a triad on the ground. That is going to reach out and touch some things at great range. And we have a T2 gun commander. Good amount of health and regen on that one. So a uh, nice tool that the UEF has as well. Um, Again, I cannot overemphasize. This is going... Ah, there we go. Interceptors over flak. No! This is exactly what you don't want to do. Even if you have a numerical advantage, which you didn't, if you fly over flak before you engage, you're not going to win that. I guarantee you. <clears throat> so, yeah, Arrowin to Nexus. Especially now, please, please make some T1 bombers. For the love of all that is good in the world, why are you not abusing your air control? Especially versus this opponent, because there are still a lot of auroras in that mix, and a lot, uh oh, ooh. oh, there we go, veterancy. Ha, ah, so much better. That takes a load off your mind. When you hit that veterancy, you're like, oh no, three hits away from dying, two hits away from dying, and now I have 4,000 extra health. I'm not gonna complain about this. Surrounding Gently's commander with pillars, but I don't think that's going to score a kill either. He is easily going to be able to pick up a veterancy and or force those back, especially with the help of the Oblivion turrets. And that blaze is sitting over here in the corner. Pew, 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 pew. Till it makes your eyes bleed trying to shoot that radar. Please, 
gently stop the madness. Surely you hear that in the corner of your mind, knocking at the edge of your consciousness. Pretty soon, that laser sound effect will be ingrained so deeply in your psyche that you will hear it in your dreams. But then again, maybe a, point one, a T1 point defense will put it out of its misery. All right, everyone can sleep in peace tonight. Oblivion turret still going to work. These guys have 13 and 6 kills. Rarely do I get to say this, but these point defense have actually paid for themselves. What do you know? Got some even songs on the front. Those are going to be able to lay in a little bit of damage from far out. Basically, the only reason that I would use Aeon mobile missile launchers is because I can reach out and hit other factions' mobile missile launchers with them. And uh, they're actually taking return fire as well. That is something that a lot of people don't think about. Um, mobile missile launcher spam can technically be countered by mobile missile launcher spam unless you're moving and microwing your mobile missile launchers at all times, in which case you're sacrificing your focus in other areas of the map which can come back to bite you in the tail. More blazes! More blazes is what this game needs. I still can't believe we're watching. This is like the return of the assault tank. I don't think I've ever seen this many assault tanks used on a land-based map, but I gotta say it is working for them. The speed is getting them to where they need to be. Was that a mercy? It looked like a mercy shot. Gently does have T2 air, so I would not say that it's not a mercy, but I don't know. I guess we shall never know. Um, the blazes are finally going to be forced back by pillars. They're going to run through point defense, which is going to kill them all off. But at this point, I think Gently has such a decisive upper hand that there's only one way this match can go, unless T3 land! Here comes the Demolisher! And it is now sitting still in the factory, blocking the next unit from building, and it can't fire anyway. What on earth? Get out! There we go. He's off now. We got a Percival coming up, but it may be too late. There is nothing that Aeon can pull out at this point that would counter four or five Percivals being on the field, but he does not have four or five Percivals. He doesn't even have one. Here comes the T3 Mobile Artillery. It is going to fire point blank into this mass of tanks, decimating two or three T1 tanks and the shield on an Obsidian, taking half the health off in a single shot. That is what you want. Blanket damage into tightly, pla yeah, 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 tightly packed clumps of units. Apparently I'm discovering a whole new genre of tongue twisters during this cast. Apparently we need to come out with a book of subcom twisters. Um, Nexus, you are not looking healthy. Gently is at 10k, Nexus is at 11k. But there are a whole lot more units on this side. Here comes two Percivals. Is it going to be enough? We're down to 4k and 8. T1 bombers, bro. T1 bombers every time. No, there goes the nuke. And I can't see the comp. Gently, 1,000 health and Percival shots. <laughs> He won the battle, and he lost the war. Oh my goodness, mutual KO. You do not see that tremendously often in a one versus one, especially after one player is dead. But those Percivals, man, the shots are brutal. 1,600 damage per firing cycle. Two of them land a hit, that's 3,200 damage. So you can easily go from a quarter health ACU to dead in about two seconds flat. If uh, Nexus had gotten those Percivals online earlier, uh, perhaps built a Percival instead of that Demolisher, or gotten the Demolisher off the track sooner so that he could get more units online, that may very well have ended differently. But either way, well played both guys. Gently definitely took advantage of all of the Aeon faction strengths and played well. I hope you guys pay attention to what he did and when he did it, and hopefully you can glean something from it. And Nexus of Reality, the only thing I got to say to you is T1 Bombers, man, got to, got to abuse T1 Bombers. That's the only way to go 
versus Aeon. Otherwise, you did very well securing your edges and getting back into the game as much as you possibly could. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap up this game as always. Thank you so much for watching and I do have a brilliant game for you on Thursday. Please be here to tune in for that. I know you guys are good about that and you usually do, but uh, it is a good, good game. Also, check the link in the description. Um, I believe I have to look at my stats from the previous video. There's either going to be a link to a survey for which game I pick up next or a link to the announcement. For which game I pick up next or just an announcement for which game I pick up because I've got to go back and look at the two videos I mentioned it on and see what guys have suggested and I'm going to be picking up a new strategy game so hope you guys will stick around for that I already said it but I do mean it from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you in the next video